Gentlemen, boys and girls, and base of all ages, age and sizes, he has returned to us at long last! The GOAT, the main man, the Samuela Academy teacher we all need in our lives! He has returned! Yay! <laughs> Seminella Academy! I'll put the disc I'll put the uh the, the playlist at the very end of the video. You already know what you gotta do, man. Seminella Academy. I've even made a little animation, and I'll probably put that at the very end of this video as well. Link in the description! Oh, I can't wait! It's been so long, bro. Where animal scientific names come from. I'm so ready, bro. I'm so ready. Welcome back, Samadella. Good to have you back, buddy. Let's check him out. Link in the description. Let's go. Oh, yeah. There it is for my OGs. Oh, yeah. That's the good shit. We got to say for yourself, Samadella. <sighs> Hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020, and boy are my arms tired. Let's Mother see fuck. what I missed. Hmm. Uh -huh. He's dead, war in Ukraine, the yep. Taliban's back. Yep. What, what is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. <laughs> Unprecedented global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some yep. popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just oh. about covers it. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever... That's it? That's how you gonna say to us? After all these years, that's how you gonna say Zemanella. Oh, you son of a bitch. I freaking love it, you crazy son of a bitch. Wonder Let's what go. they actually mean. To find out, we must look to taxonomists. Who? They're the guys Tax? responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. Taxes? And boy, are they convoluted. <laughs> First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, yeah, genus, species. species. I've seen yeah. plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D the just COVID showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal <laughs> on fairground staff. <laughs> Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. Oh, Donkey Kong's <laughs> oh, fucking God. serendipitously. The way this whole thing works differs slightly oh, depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one okay. because that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. True. The one exception is species, which is generally species. defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that oh. are sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live oh, fulfilling lives, God. but they're all shooting blank, so the they don't fuck? count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against oh, the God, dog. We can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually <laughs> works. So dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, though, the it's the wild that? west in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sublevels in between. <laughs> Lesions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions. And if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds Giga of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. Hyper. There's even subspecies, subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourself that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To yep. that, my friends, text Autonomous say, uh -huh. but while that's pretty uh -huh. complex, the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it a leo. It's Gun, a leo tiger, lion. it's a tigris. Cat, tigris. it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated Burgess. the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysatos. Golden yeah, eagle, eagle. They decided oh. to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially Ooh. the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool-looking mm -hmm. body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup, 
red triangle slug. I'm going on break. We call this thing a fucking unicorn, almost like right, that's a unicorn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. Oh, you got right. four feet, six feet, feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, I get it Feet, cows feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting, <laughs> another thing to point out is I where you it. found it. This could be a territory like American bear or something. Ursus Americanus, crocodile is my business. Like Woods macaque or Micaiah Sullivan. But that's Rats boring. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives oh. and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better <laughs> way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not mm, all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physics just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing well. radiation. <clears throat> As custom here at the Beast Mode Army, allow me! <laughs> Cyvert, Grey, Ron Pengen, Curry, Bickwell, Woofel Forder. Nailed it measurement and even then only the top dogs got away with it now zoology any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say this one has 13 spots but the one in the books only got 11 I will call him Splinkus's Ladybird. <laughs> Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists uh, to explorers uh, and uh. more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background oh, characters get God. immortalized one way or another. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so yeah. they must be pretty cool. <laughs> of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything fuck except for do. one taxonomist. Oh being my God. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since what? all the big cute stuff really? was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. Uh. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, oh, the only similarity I Beyonce. can get here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, but both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, Damn. one <laughs> nice. Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia fila Neil Youngie to honor the his favorite musician, <laughs> which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV <laughs> and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce nice. the naming of apostatist Stephen Colbert. So, oh my god. If that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone is fucking what nine. As do a lot of other presidents. This? Trump's got a moth with funny hair. Fuck Bush has a fungus beetle. What Reagan's a wasp. Carter's uh, got a darter, and so forth. Even uh, Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this oh, blind cave beetle. How, Mind why? you, it was 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler uh, actually wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomologist, <laughs> and then went on to do, oh, you know, Hitler things. Fun oh, fact, no. not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also Poor now guy. facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess Damn. old habits die hard. The well, fictional characters oh. have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, <laughs> this one's named after Darth Vader. Darth Vader Beetle! Beetle. Looks like his helmet, I nice. guess. This was actually named by the same guy who did the Bush one and belongs to the same genus. Makes mm. sense. There's also this mm. mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a nice. lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, oh. the guy working with the specimen had his neck covered with hair and oh. his lips clenched into a pog oh. and his endocrine system filled with oh. soy. And he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. <laughs> and then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him. The dino's genus is now Sauronia from Eye of Sauron. This spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because it. I'm sorry, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe my beast mode visor's malfunction. That's a spider? What the fuck is that on its tail? Does it have. Is that, is that a tail? Is that the carcass of another entity? Why is it. Like, why is this. It's a spider, but then his ass is like a giant, it's like a fucking, like a goose. Put, get a little goose, put a little goose there, me. Put a little goose like in that shit. Just a little, got a little goose, got a little head. Goose. So I don't know what the fuck this shit is, but it's goose head. Extravixia Gryffindori. Yay, Hufflepuff.
It looks uh, like the sorting hat. SpongeBob <laughs> has not a sponge, but oh. a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon hey. each have their own. You guessed it, beetle. And the list oh. goes on. Oh, but nice. Scientists are nerds. Who knew? <laughs> anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, oh, there God. is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This oh. states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for mm. the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, uh -oh. particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Mm. Here's one. Red panda? Nah. Shining cat. Coined in 1825. <laughs> to be nice. fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so yeah, whatever. Here's two. Capsicum chinense. Eaten Who there? Now? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe where oh. literally all hot peppers came from. This principle <laughs> holds true even if someone thinks they've found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented John Edward the Gray. plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after oh. a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some oh. other douche classified this character <laughs> as the quagga. The last quagga. quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So, oh. why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So oh, technically, gosh. they're one species. And today, they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again, so does asinus, and that worked asinus. out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed Quagga Quagga, quagga so quagga. you know it's the real Quagga. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Quagga. Wild Wild Horse, Spotted wild, Spotted wild, Panther, where? Part or of my favorite, of Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Just oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's the gorillas gorilla that ever gorilled. Fuck you want for me. <laughs> a closely related rule <laughs> also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally get any tax on the oh, same God. thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. Well, Kill if it. you saw a genus called Echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an Echidna, right? Well, Knuckles. no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788. So the real echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus or Taka who now? Then a decade <laughs> later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 uh. years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to bitis because they bitis. bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense given that the original echidna oh. from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who what cares? What the hell, Knuckles? Point? Anyway, I've just barely <laughs> scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'll see you in 2025. Pretty much, yeah. Ah, uh, we missed you, buddy. Please don't, please don't go until 2025. We need your excellent knowledge juice. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say it. Don't think it. Sus. No. No. Yeah. Oh my God! It's so good to have Sam Manella back, which means he'll hopefully make more, cause we. We miss you, man. We, we need more salmonella in our lives. Our brain juices are a smidge dry on the knowledge sauce. We need your awesomeness juice in order to increase our brain sauce. Because our brain sauce be going a smidge dry. The awesomeness of salmonella has returned to us. And hopefully we'll see you in another video. Very freak fracking soon. Good to have you back, buddy. I'll put that animation somewhere at the very end of this video if you want to check it out. I actually <laughs> I, I animated him. It's like, like maybe he would check it out one day. But... Who knows? He might. Who freaking knows? But that's gonna do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Link in the description to the main man himself. But if you enjoyed this video with me, take your beast mode claws of awesomeness juice and slash the like button. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and base of our lady saints and sciences. Love, peace, and above all, stay beast mode for the epic win of all the wins.